1990, the North Alabama Conference Commission on the Status and Role of Women recognized a barrier breaker, and that began a tradition of each year at annual conference recognizing someone who has worked to lift up those on the margins and specifically to work for the full inclusion of women in the total life of the church. The award became known as the Louise Branscombe Barrier Breaker Award. Let's hear from a past recipient. Well, I remember Dr. Louise with, uh, with deep appreciation. Uh, I remember her most in terms of her, her time on the conference floor, uh, standing there uh, to speak to issues that were essentially off the radar screen of most of the delegates on that floor. And so as a young pastor, uh, that's about a few years ago, uh, Dr. Louise became a person that I could trust uh, regarding the issues. She didn't stand alone. There were others. I remember Duncan Hunter Claude Whitehead and others, uh, but uh, it was far, far, far from any large segment in those years when we were dealing with segregation uh, of the races, uh, when we were dealing with poverty and the church's response or lack thereof to poverty. And Louise, Louise was one of those who was there for what she believed to be the way of Christ. One of the great gifts of my life was to be in Birmingham during all of the 60s uh, to be in the midst of the struggle, and my goodness, what a struggle it was. And I, I was, I protected myself quite well in terms of my place within the institution, but still tried to give some witness to inclusiveness, to the wrongness of what, what we were doing. Uh, and so I guess perhaps it was natural that so many pastors in this conference uh, were drawn to other areas wanting to witness to this grace of God that is the very center of everything we say we believe. During the last years uh, of my time here at Vestavia, uh, I became involved in three different areas of ministry uh, as a volunteer. First at a baby's place, which was a home and about the only home other than the hospital that babies born with AIDS had. I got involved with uh, Julia Tutwiler Prison. The women on or in the main isolation unit and they were isolated because they were infected with HIV and some of them uh, well into uh, AIDS and some dying there in prison with AIDS. And the third was the 1917 clinic, which is the AIDS Research and Treatment Center at, uh, at UAB. And this was at a time when the church, at least portions of the church, most of the church, I would say, was silent. But there were those angry, violent 
voices coming from uh, from churches. And so this, in the silence, in the midst of the silence, these became the voices of the church. And they were so, so horrible. And so the, the longing to go to Southside, as it were, and that became symbolic. Uh, to go there was to try to give, her, give a different witness, to be a different witness to these children of God. While I was here at Vestavia, I had a, uh, a couple of counselors uh, who would send their clients to, to me because they said, we believe, or I believe, uh, this person needs to hear a word of grace from the church. What a life-changing experience to really get to know these persons as persons. And of course, to try to say some healing, uh, accepting word of grace. Uh, or in other words, just to bless them, you see, when so much that they had heard was a curse upon them. And, and in fact, I look back across all these years and to be in the right place at the right time is such a gift. To be retiring at the very moment Dr. Michael Sag was dreaming about uh, somehow reaching out to the community to educate the community about HIV disease. And along the way in those years to try to help people understand uh, that these young men who were dying, many of them, uh, were their sons and daughters. They were their children. And we were treating them like they were demons. Spent a lot of years thinking I needed to earn God's love. Uh, so I heard about grace, but it took quite a number of years for that to begin to take hold of me. Uh, and to recognize that this is the central message of the gospel. Thank you for watching this video. The work of Breaking Barriers is ongoing. With that in mind and on behalf of the Commission, I would like to invite you to follow the link below to nominate any person or persons who exhibits the behavior and spirit of a barrier breaker. The nomination deadline is March 31st. Until next time, may God's grace and mercy enfold you.